plastics Sorry. recycling uh, collection event at Emerald Park. And um, it's on October 2nd from 9 to 12. And we will be collecting number twos, uh, the ones you can't not put in your commingling now. So it will be number two uh, tubs and lids because we can put um, bottles and jugs now into our commingling recycling bins. Uh, so we'll be doing number two um, tubs and lids. We'll be doing number four tubs and lids and number five bottle jugs, tubs and lids. And there are requirements for them, which I will put in the chat, which are um, the same as it's been for a while. They need to have their labels removed uh, unless it's a heat sealed label, which means you cannot get it off at all. Um, and lids removed, unless if the lid has a recycling number of a two, four, or five, I can go into that category. But everything needs to be sorted, cleaned, and without labels uh, when you bring it in. And um, so the details are also in the newsletter. Right? Excuse me. The details are also in the newsletter. Both. Okay. Just went okay. Out. Yeah. So you should I, have access to that. They are, and I I think she sent out the flyers, but I'm not sure if she sent it to like, you know, yeah. the mailing list or just the board or what. No, the flyers are were was included in the newsletter. I said everybody got it. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, let's see what else. So we have to be pretty strict about what we'll accept. Because when we take it down to the Lane County transfer site, they're very strict about what they'll accept. So um, let's see. I think that's all I have, just as long as everybody knows now that you can put number one and two bottle and jugs in your uh, commingling bin if you have that service coming to your house, which is a really big improvement from what we've had. Um, but there's still a whole lot of stuff. We Damn. Do. So that's why we're doing <clears throat> this event. Kathy, where do we take it? We take it down to the Lane County transfer site. The no, where, where do the households in the neighborhood take their items? What do we do with it when we have them? What do you do with them? Are you having a collection site that we take, go to? Yes, we are doing a collection on October 2nd at Emerald Park. Okay, that's what I want to know. Thank you very that's much. What this is, that's what this is all about. We're doing yeah. an, a collection event and it's from nine to 12 on October 2nd. It's a site. Right. And we're gonna be in one of the shelters at Emerald Park. All the information is in the flyer. And so there's a group of about 10 to 15 volunteers. And we'll be examining everything and it and you, you kind of hit your time limit there kathy i'm sorry to be pushy okay okay that's good i'll put it in the chat and there you go i'm done with my part okay thank you very <laughs> thank much you. appreciate your work on that thank you jo jolene hi good good evening thank you kathy for that good work um i just wanted to announce that there will be a social justice committee meeting this wednesday evening from five until six thirty and I'll um, locate the Zoom link and put that in the chat if you're interested. Um, I will just add that the Social Justice Committee did meet in August and it was kind of a smaller subgroup that's working on um, developing an education educational component with a plan to do a presentation regarding a land acknowledgement, acknowledging um, Indigenous people and Native people's history and heritage and ownership of our land prior to European settlement. So that's all still to come. That's my brief synopsis. But anyway, we are meeting on Wednesday at five. If you're interested, I'll put the Zoom in the chat. And then um, there is a smaller subgroup that's already started work that will be meeting later this month. That's all. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jolene. Uh, Jan? You're muted, Jan. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. A <clears throat> couple items. This Sunday at 11 o'clock meeting at my house, 212 Benjamin, we are having a permaculture site tour. Most of it's going to be in River Road, although we will visit Square <laughs> Housing Co-op. But uh, the site tour, uh, bicycle recommended, although we're not really going real far, but we want to show and tell actions people are taking at home and in their lifestyles to reduce eco footprints and uh, produce more basic needs closer to home, like food, energy, water, culture. So there's some wonderful examples in River Road. We've had bike tours before, and uh, this is a great way to see what people are doing. The ideal is that people can recognize stuff they might like to adapt to their own lifestyles, their own homes, if they're not doing some of this already. Again, that's this Sunday meeting at 11 o'clock, uh, 212 Benjamin. I'll put this info in the chat also. And then I'm also going to put in the chat another item about a series of presentations that I'm a part of and some other people are a part of. The, the overall thrust of the presentations is real life actions that people are taking in the Northwest for creating a preferred future, a future uh, I'm thinking where humans live within the boundaries of the natural world, which we're pretty far from right now. So that uh, is a series of presentations. I'll put that information in chat also. That's good. Thank you very much, Jan. Uh, John? Yeah, thank you. Um, several things. First of all, at our last board meeting, the board decided their interested in potentially moving to a hybrid form of meeting, which means you could attend in person or you could attend online. But we recognize that we need a couple of people to volunteer to manage the Zoom meeting so that the people in the Zoom can be involved as if they were in the meeting as much as possible. So if we get a couple of volunteers, we'll head in that direction. But without that, we're not comfortable doing so. So please volunteer, put your name in the chat, um, put it in as Zoom or hybrid or whatever with your name. Hopefully we'll get a couple of folks. Um, second thing is our next board meeting. The board will be choosing two people to recommend to fill our vacant board spots. So if you're interested in applying to be on the board and you haven't applied already, um, please do so before next Friday. So send a message to co-chair at riverroadco.org if you're interested in that. And finally, um, since it involves our city council, I just wanted to give you the election results for the recall. This is as of last Friday, September 16th. There'll be two more updates. The final one will be on October 3rd, in which case, unless the suit to... Um, overturn the election because of claims of misinformation um, on October 3rd, that will be decided. But the more important thing is here's where the votes are. Um, the recall votes are at this moment, yes, 2,312, no, 1,588. I'm done. <clears throat> okay. So um, any, other, okay, no other announcements, Are we good? So I'm going to turn it over now to Brenda, who's going to facilitate uh, 10 minutes of um, uh, dyad explorations. Thanks. So this is a very new uh, experience. Can you hear me OK? OK. Um, this is a new experience for us in this group, although I've done it in other groups. Um, I'm going to put each of us in a Zoom room with one other person. So I would invite you, if you're, uh, if you aren't showing your video, it would be really helpful for just this little bit. If you came on, our goal is that everybody gets a chance to say your name and uh, uh, at least meet one other person in your neighborhood tonight. And the question that I'm asking you to address is, um, what can I do to be supportive of the public schools in my neighborhood? 
What can I do to be supportive of the public schools in my neighborhood? So I will put you into um, breakout rooms. I'll bring you back in eight minutes. So we'll spend a couple of minutes. Um, how, how you'll report out is right in the chat when we get back, one thing you thought of or talked about for you. So you're not telling me what somebody else talked about, but just what you, what can I do to be supportive of public schools in my neighborhood? Any questions? If so, raise your virtual hand or unmute and say, I don't know. We good? Okay, it says there are 36 participants and that means I'm gonna try 17 breakout rooms and see what happens. If you, uh, if you have questions or you get lost or you're confused, leave the breakout room and you'll come back to where I am. See you in, uh, in eight minutes. I didn't say you have to accept it when it shows up on your desktop. It gave me a long list, maybe because I'm a co-host. But maybe I don't know. Now I'm not in a room. I don't know what happened. No, well, you're a you're a host, and the oh. host usually doesn't get sent. Oh, bummer. Uh, okay. Jan? <laughs> I'm looking There's two unassigned participants, it says. Well, you and check. Let me just uh, actually, there are several unassigned participants, okay. uh, or there are several groups that are not, but I don't see their faces. So, Chuck, are you there? Chuck and John are in a group together. Um, I'm sorry, Claire, I, the one I'm seeing and what you're telling me are two different things. Can I just manage it from what I can? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm, okay, I'm out. Thanks. thanks. Um, Rick, are you, or Jan Rising, are you here? Or Dan, Daniel Hill? Like I see people who are muted, who, who, are still showing up, but I'm not hearing, you know, if you're here and you can hear me, unmute yourself, please. I don't think you'd hear them if they were in a group. Candace. No, 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 no. What's true is they're not in a group right now. Candace room 11 asks for help. Should I go in there and ask help her? Uh, sure. Okay. Hi there. Um, I was in room 14 and nobody showed up. So anyways, I'm, I'm cooking and we're just having Okay. So just chat with me for a minute. What can, right. What's your what name? you think of that we, that you could do for, uh, helping schools? Well, the first thing that came to mind was continue paying my taxes. That's a good plan. Yeah. Um, and I promised to go to board meetings and then immediately failed to follow up on that after I got all of you know, I thought I'm going to start going to board meetings. Lori, did you, were you in a meeting by yourself? Sorry. That's okay. Welcome back. We're, uh, Shava, did I say that right? Hava. Hava. Yeah. And this is Willie. Hi, Willie. Hello. Over on uh, Brentwood. Okay. Between Fremont and Armstrong. I'm part of River Song co-housing, so I'll be at the end of Oakley Lane in a little while. Cool. Lori, any, uh, Misty, are you, was there no one in your room? No. Okay, I'm going to, uh, we'll just have a little chat here. Uh, Lori, did you think of something that you might do to support public schools or Misty? Not aggravate anyone. Don't aggravate people, okay. Misty? Um, How can you be supportive to public schools? Yeah, so I asked uh, the 
public school board not long ago to please start implementing uh, dialectical behavior therapy into their curriculums. Mm -hmm. And so how are you being supportive of the schools? I'm going to meetings and continuing to talk about dialectical behavior therapy. Uh, so this keeps staying on their radar so they can, you know, start getting the idea. <laughs> and, you know, and if, if there's more money that needs to be raised to support that kind of curriculum, you know, I'd be down for helping to organize around that. But um, so going to board meetings and having and being articulate about what you think is important. Yes, also. Yeah, supporting BIPOC students <clears throat> if there are incidents at schools. Um, I'd like them to know, like, like when we organize the the rally for our family, the family that was, uh, I'm sorry, there was a big bug that just flew by. <laughs> um, ADHD here, sorry. Squirrel. Um, okay, anybody yeah. else think of something else? It's a yeah, very really short. <clears throat> Uh, I can throw in that um, I like to volunteer over at the uh, 4J Natives program. Uh, I, I do artwork and I'm familiar with a lot of native art forms. And so I just go over there and uh, hang out with the kids uh, and do stuff with the kids. And I've actually gone to uh, one of their four or five day uh, retreats uh, at, um, where's that? Um, Sky Camp. Sky Camp. And uh, nice class there in rattle making. So um, I like to do stuff like that with indigenous students. And um, for a while, I worked with one-on-one uh, -on -one with some older kids, so uh, to teach them the art stuff I knew how to do. Thank you. Anybody else? What can I do to support local schools? Pay, pay attention, I think, and maybe find ways of supporting teachers. You know, I, would, I, I hear people who teach feeling rather unappreciated these days. Sure. Yeah. Does anyone know what the plan is for the 4J High School, the North Eugene High School, the one that's being replaced by the new school? What the plan is for that? <coughs> you mean like what's the build and so forth? Well, there's going to be a school that's not going to be used for high school because they're building a new one right next to it. So I was curious if anyone knew what 4J's plan was for it. Ah, that's one of the questions I believe that John hmm. sent to the superintendent. So we should okay. hear that answer during this meeting tonight. Awesome. Good. Yeah. I need to know what they have planned. Yeah. I was surprised by looking on the website as a new board member trying to learn away, learn around things that uh, just how many interesting schools, how many integrated schools and and like a Japanese school and a, Mexi a Spanish school. I was very surprised to have right in our neighborhood all of those things. People are coming back. So right. thank you, special group that I was part of. Mm -hmm. As you come back, I invite you to write in the chat one thing uh that you thought of and then just spend a little time reading what people wrote um Hi. wow remember to uh, lo uh, mute yourself as you come back okay thank you just let people pay my taxes uh Volunteer in a reading program, lower class sizes, support teachers somehow. Great ideas. Just support a teacher. Oh, I wrote that and then I didn't hit. You have to hit return after you write something in the chat. So thank you. Um, 
and thank you for speaking to your neighbors. That's, we'll just keep listening and ending. And we had some questions come up that I think John is going to ask um, our school superintendent to address. So it's time to turn okay. the meeting All to right. someone else. Okay. So John, I forgot what we said. Am I supposed to do this? <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, we want to welcome uh, our, the new district superintendent, Andy Day, um, and apparently he is doing a round, a tour of community conversations with folks, and which is really welcomed, and so we're in, we're in that, that's, we're having him come for that conversation, and um, I hope that we generated a bunch of good questions to ask him. And uh, we're going, if you have a question, um, raise your electronic hand and, and you'll get, uh, that's how you will join the queue. Okay. Um, so I've spotlighted you, Andy. Woo. Take it away. Hey, everybody. I'm not often spotlighted. So my, my picture is awfully big for me. Well, you can hide yourself for yourself if you want. <laughs> well, I'm not much to look at. I have to do that every day. I appreciate getting the invitation to come. Um, I have been um, asking people to come to any one of 100 community chats. We're up to about 60 of that 100. So if you'd like to share something with me in particular, um, I'd love for you to, to sign up. It's on our district website. But they've been really, really informative informational for me. I've been in the district now. Um, most recently, this is my eighth year. I actually taught earlier in my career in the early 2000s middle school science, um, but then worked over in Springfield and then out of the country for a bit. So even though I've been around um, in a new position, I get to hear some things, people's concerns, people's hopes and desires for the district that I, I wouldn't have in my prior um, positions. And so it's been great. My understanding is that at least in part, folks were interested in getting some information about where we are with the North High School construction, and then some more information in general about how we envision supporting the, the North region, um, elementary, middle, and high schools. Um, happy to take any questions. I've got a bit of a slideshow. It's not too many slides. If y'all would like to see, um, I'd be happy to share my screen when the time is right. But I can answer the questions that folks were that, that, that I have been posed and you can interrupt me whenever you would like. Um, and I appreciate you rearranging the, the, the agenda a bit. I hate to be a first time member high maintenance guest at your community organization meeting, but I'm here at the district office and they're going to be doing some core network um, fixing tonight that's likely to cut me off around 8 15 is what they tell me not much i can do about that so, so andy i just made you a co-host so you can share your screen great if you want to. thank you are you able to see um a slideshow right now that is up here at the top says north <coughs> with some yes menu? yes this yes. is great thanks so um one of the questions was what's the status of the new build and we're on schedule, uh, ready to open in the fall of 2023, and we're on budget. And that's pretty astonishing given the difference between when the bond passed and when we began the design phase and where we are with cost escalations right now. We were really fortunate to get locked into a bid prior to plywood cost and $70 a sheet. Um, but this is the architecture's uh, rendering of the building. This is looking from the southwest corner along Silver here. And this is directly facing what will be the front of the building right here. And these are some earlier, um, an earlier and a more recent photo. Um, I'm assuming that you can see my cursor hovering around this big square. That is the theater and is now right here. And here's where you'll see the band room, the choir room, um, some dressing rooms for the theater. Along the west wing here are two floors of classrooms, driveway around the back, career and technical education shops and multi-spaces are in the back. Um, the health center is over here with the child care center with its own parking. 
And all of this will get the landscaping and the bus drive through like is shown in the renditions. We're just not quite there yet. Here's an aerial view facing due east, I believe, yep. Um, where you can see this side of the construction. You'll see here's the turf field with the surrounding track, Swede and the softball field. This is the old building here. Um, and this is just recently at the beginning of this month, we did all of the paving and concrete work. Here's the track, um, no more street, low, street area parking there along Silver. There's a sidewalk and all the parking will actually be inside the, the campus itself. Um, just wanted you to be able to see where we were in, in the process. It's coming along pretty well. Um, I've, I've not gotten a tour inside, but I hear that I could ask for one and get taken through if I, I'm there at the right time and wearing the right equipment. I'm going to stop. Well, no, I'll leave that up. Um, like I said, we're, we're on, on schedule to open this next fall uh, and on budget. And I've got a question of what, what is the district going to do with the existing uh, North High School building? And I don't know that there is any, that the board has not made a final decision. What we knew going into the bond was that this building could possibly get some deferred maintenance taken care of. And by the big ticket items in the deferred maintenance would be a new roof, would be, uh, we would need a new boiler and new piping. And when we get to that level of expense to renovate a building, it kicks in some other code obligations that are more recent. So we would have to um, redo fire suppression and our DDCs, our digital data controls, which control the heat, the HVAC. Um, that initially was estimated to be cost estimations with contractors were between five and $7 million. After the cost escalations due to COVID, we got um, quotes that that same amount of work is gonna cost closer to $30 million. And that is not with, that's without any renovation at all whatsoever to remodel it to fit. And so there's a conversation right now about what's the best way to spend district dollars. Um, we would also see that of all the high schools in the district, the North Eugene site is constrained in terms of the space it has access to more so than any of the high, other high schools. And so there's been parts of the community that have wanted us to entertain the idea of not having the old North building and replacing it with green space, field space for sports teams and community to be able to access. So a decision's not yet made as to exactly what will happen, but we know that the costs are um, much different than the best the best quotes we got going into the bond several years ago. Um, there was also a question about what are the plans for the future of YG and Kelly. And there's a, a group of people that consist of board members, administrators, and teachers from Kelly and YG, at least at this point, that are having conversations about what is the future of that co-location. There are some that uh, think that there's a lot of promise in the co-location of Kelly and YG, but I think it's fair to say that they're outnumbered by the number of people that say that each of those schools in order to thrive needs their own purpose-built facility. And so we are we do know that at least until, um, for, for the next couple of years while we figure something out, they're gonna be co-located together. And there are some things that they've shared with us that will be important to do so that they can more effectively operate their programs. Uh, but I, I think it's fair to say that it's a problem that's not yet been fully solved and that we need to have conversations with the staff and the parents and students and community members impacted by those two school decisions and come up with a, with a plan to solve it. Um, I know that that's a, it's a big issue, an issue that has been discussed for many years as to where, where YG would be. They were in the Silver Lee building with co-located with Corridor. Um, that building's gone to make space for the new north, but but it's a it's a decision that absolutely needs to be made and has some financial implications that need to be taken seriously. And please feel free to interrupt me and and ask a follow up question or a clarifying question or offer a, a comment um, before I just take on to the next thing. 
I understand there's a question about the bike path connecting behind the school. There's a bike path over in this area that connects, I believe it's Court Street, is that correct? That is connected to the back of the school. Um, I spoke with the chief operations officer, Kyle Tucker, who, if you don't know him, he's a, a North grad, um, about first what we need to do is determine what the, what the fate of this building is and where that space will be, how that space will be utilized. If the building is there, then we would asphalt, uh, you know, pay with a hard surface, the trail that currently exists that brings you to the back of the building. If it's not there, then we would want to take a look at what would, would be designed and still do a hard surface uh, paved pathway, but possibly lead it in so that it would provide access to fields if they were there. We know that something's gonna be done, but we wanna make sure we know what's happening with this space so we don't pave this and then subsequently decide to do something different with this space and then tear it up and do it again. So I think the, the short answer is that something will absolutely be done to provide a hard surface, uh, but whether it's to the back of this building or whether it's to provide access into the fields um, is a different matter to be determined after we know what's happening here. Um, I see that there was a question about Peter DeFazio having allocated $6 million for a bike bridge in the area and the, the cost uh, was estimated or while there's $6 million allocated, the thinking is that it's more of a a 12 million or higher dollar amount. Um, we've reached out to the to the city and I don't want to speak on their behalf, but don't have the impression that there's additional money to support that, at least at this point in time. Maybe we could learn different from some folks in the audience here or somebody might reach out to me, but we absolutely want to stay in conversation with, with the, the, your organization and the greater community because we know that we want safe routes to school to be just that, really safe routes to school. And so we're, we're invested in students having a, a safe way to get to school and staff for that matter. I mean, if they choose not to drive a car, they walk or they, they ride a bike. I understand also that there is, there has been conversation and I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing the screen because there's no more related, that there was conversation about a proposed navigation center in the River Road area that there was a site that was identified for it um, where the old LTD collection site was. And then there's a, another site, I believe at 100 River Road um, or River Avenue, that would be a navigation center. Now there are questions about whether or not we're involved in those conversations, uh, what we would support. I'm not sure that I understand what all the questions are, but we are very interested in making sure that um, as we solve challenges that the city faces to support families who are experiencing housing insecurity, that we also maintain a real keen eye on uh, the fact that that's a pretty major thoroughfare for students coming to and from school, that they walk that way to go to different places when they go to lunch, um, that, that we just want to be really cognizant that we don't, in trying to solve one problem, create another. So um, my understanding is that this is uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a $4 million project that was part of what Mayor Venice had as um, a covenant with the city to address a, a big issue, but that that's been um, five years in the making, and I'm not certain exactly where those plans are, but we definitely have a vested interest to the degree that we're allowed to be involved in those the conversations leading up to a decision. Yes, sir, John. Andy, can I interrupt? Um, the navigation center has officially started up. It is at 100 River Road, the old um, VA clinic. Um, we are in the process of doing outreach to the community with the county and the city. And if you haven't been notified, I'll make sure you are soon. But it should be starting up any day now. It'll have uh, 75 participants. The goal is to transition them from chronic homelessness into housed. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then um, there was there was a, a a statement. I'd say not so much a question about the river. You have a good neighbor agreement with the city, county, schools, and neighbors. But I wasn't quite sure <clears throat> what that would entail, or what you were hoping for, or what. What might have made us not the best neighbors and would love to hear from y'all about about that um, and that represents the list of questions that um that i was presented 
and would be happy to answer any others that folks have. I see some in the chat. Um, so, John, are you calling on people, or do you want to let continue to let Andy manage that? Sorry, Clara, this is your item. I thought you were going to facilitate the line. Okay. I can see hands raised. They come up queued in order of hand raised. If people can use the virtual hand, I can probably manage. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Sure. Jan? I'm muted. Hang on just a sec. Yeah, I'm getting a little dark here. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, I put in chat, does 4J make any effort to source food for your cafeterias from local farmers, local sources? We do. And I'll be really honest, the last couple of years have been a real challenge for us due to supply chain issues and some local sources not being able to do what they had in previous years. Um, what you, you seem like the person that might know, Jan, we recently went from having a contract with, I believe it was Sodexo or maybe it was Cisco where they provided all the food to self operations where we created all our food from scratch. Oh my gosh. And that started the year of COVID. And so we, we built, we ran up to it. Um, we got a few months into the school year where we were working out the kinks and, and really expanding our nutrition services staff so we could do that. And then we closed down for a year and then we came back with some real challenges around, around food. Um, we're putting um, salad bars that stay open throughout the entire day where students, students can just come through and grab something. We do wanna work with local, um, local growers so that we can, number one, support business, and number two, not add to the number of trucks that need to be driving around when we've got stuff right here that we can buy and, and feed folks with. But if you know some people that are interested in or have had difficulty in connecting with our food service staff, if you don't mind putting it in the chat and I'll make sure that we reach out to them in some way. No. Thank you. Haba. Hi, Andy. I'm here hey. with uh, my partner, Willie, and thank you so much for taking some of your busy time and spending it with us here. I, I just, I had in the chat just a few questions, but I'll, I'll condense them. One is, um, I've had idea, an idea for the, for the high school. I don't think that even if we have to take it down, you have to take it all down. I mean, um, we have homeless families that are homeless and children that go to school that are homeless. And I just see that as a really great place to have people where they have showers and rooms and places to cook and you know just a place to be until they find housing anyways is there a process with 4j board or the, have they already made their decision and they're just going to pick one of them how, how could i be how can i submit my ideas that's one of my questions and the other question i have is what about those beautiful are they fir trees these are redwoods the big redwood trees they're not yeah, we... anywhere are they yeah, they're right in front of the school. And I don't think no matter what happens to that facility, there's no intent or need to take those down. Um, the, you absolutely can reach out to the board and make public comment or submit an email or a letter and they will absolutely respond to you. Uh, they absolutely want to hear what members of the community have to say about ideas. Um, I don't know if you make a public comment at the board meeting, their practice is not to necessarily get in dialogue, but to listen email, you'll get an, a more or less immediate response. But no, there has not been a decision made by the board as to what to do. Um, and I think, unfortunately, to some that's frustrating because they want to know what the decision is. But I do want to give credit to the board that they're really trying to listen to people. And we're feeling like we're, we're getting more information as time goes on, as we provide people with more information about a, the, the most responsible decision to make moving forward. Thank, thank you very much. And I agree with Jill in the chat. I, I'm very supportive of the Navigation Center as I do work with people that are homeless. So, yes. Yeah, and we've got, um, and it started up at North too, the Economic Justice League that works with 15th Night. Is anybody familiar with 15th Night as a program? Mm -hmm. um, really a focus on students who have ex themselves experienced homelessness, advising the school district, the superintendent, me when I was the principal on 
what we can really be doing to address issues of youth homelessness and engaging students and providing support to their peers. Oftentimes as adults, we think we know what should be done. And really the, the youth who have experienced homelessness themselves are the experts in that area. And so we're, we're working with folks to make sure that the school is a place where students can find the support that they need to stay engaged in their education. So far that's clothing, shoes, socks, food, temporary lodging, um, medical care, access to, to anything that they say that they need. And so I hope I didn't in any way give folks the impression that the district isn't supportive of the Navigation Center. We just wanna make sure that we're in the conversation so that we can inform and be informed as the process moves forward. And I am not certain, I am sorry, um, the next person that has their hand raised is in a red shirt and their name says it's RRCO, which I'm assuming is River Road Community Organization. And I don't think that's your name. I need, okay. Yeah, this is Claire. I'm sorry, Hi, I didn't Claire. change my name. Um, so uh, uh, recently, I think it was last year, there was a policy written up and agreed upon at North um, addressing racism in the student body and ways that the faculty can support students when they're being harassed and stuff like that. I'm wondering, um, it was also gonna involve some education programs for faculty. I'm wondering what's happening with that, if there's any progress on that. Sure, the district adopted a racial harassment policy. As a district, we had a harassment policy already, but the board with the support of quite a few people within the system really felt it was important to have a racial harassment policy that was specific to hate speech and intolerance of any kind based on a protected class. And so the board developed a policy. Um, administration created an administrative rule as to how that policy is going to be enforced. Some of the response is that we have um, brought on board a group of people who are performing the role of a regional equity manager. Um, and they help coordinate the efforts of the affinity groups at our schools. We have Black Student Union, Latinx Student Union, Native American Student Union, Asian Pacific Island Student Union, um, the Gender and Sexuality Alliance, and the Jewish Student Union, so that we have structures in place that bring students together that identify with a particular community, either that they're a member of or an ally with that group of students, and that we can talk about what it would mean if the school was a more welcoming place. And they have a direct line to the board of directors and they, those folks have a direct line to me. In fact, um, we're engaging in a process across the district that I refer to as organizational decision quality, making really quality decisions based on getting information, the right information from the right people. And those folks that I just described, the affinity group leaders and the regional equity managers, those are some of the folks who are gonna be able to diagnose the quality of a decision and ensure that we do not move forward unless we have the right information and we're representing the right values and outcomes. Um, there's a, there, there, we've got No Place for Hate, which is coming in. It's a program sponsored by the Anti-Defamation League um, that is student led. There's training for staff on No Place for Hate. We're looking to not just work with students and with staff, but also provide information to parents to encourage more rich decisions at home about the issues that students are facing in, in schools. And what we know is that schools are a microcosm of the community. So regardless of how hard we work, we will not be able to address that issue by ourselves. Our efforts alone will be insufficient. So we wanna partner with community agencies, much like yours, um, to see what it is that we need to do and how we can work together so that it's not just the district working on its own with the best ideas that we can come up with, but we're getting good information from outside. Great, thank you. Of course, Claire, right? Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Carlene and Pat? Uh, hi, Andy, I'm Pat. <clears throat> um, Pat. Uh, I'm wondering if, uh, if your contractors are local or at least Oregon companies, and I understand that 
that Oregon statute often requires competitive bidding for large capital projects? That is correct. We've got um, we've got some work with local architects because we have a lot of projects going on um, beyond just North. Um, you may know we, we just built Edison or starting on Camas Ridge and have done several million dollars of facilities upgrades around athletic facilities and instructional spaces over at Gillum. We have a mix of contractors that bid. Um, the board recently passed a policy that speaks to our need to engage in a community benefits program where there you go. That's what I'm getting at. And that was pretty recently, to be honest with you. I, I would be lying if I told you that I knew whether or not that relatively recent policy impacted the contracts that we agreed to with the current projects. But I know that we have obligated ourselves to engage in the community benefits program moving forward. Thank you. Of course. That's all the hands I see raised, but um, I'm happy to stick around. I'm not great on jokes to pass the time. Hello, Hillary. Oh, you're on mute. Hi. My question Hi. has to do with your landscape maintenance budget. Ooh. And um, and are is there any plans? If you walk around River Road School, you can see that the weeds are overwhelming the plantings. And despite the work of people like Pat and Carlene and other volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, they just can't. It, it's not not the path. It, it may be maybe a staff person could organize volunteers or something. There might be a creative path, but my question is, do you have plans to increase landscape maintenance at River Road School and I'm sure other schools in the district? Of course, thanks for the question. Um, far be it from any superintendent to say money's not the issue because we'll always take more money. Um, we have what we believe to be a sound budget for our grounds crew. Honestly, what we've struggled with is recruiting staff. We're down six grounds, folks. Um, we have been posting for positions since early spring of last academic year. We recently agreed with um, our labor association on some recruitment and retention bonuses. Um, that's the last thing that we contractually have to do in order to then take the savings that we have due to vacancies and work with a contractor to get the landscaping done. We would absolutely prefer to employ staff members and have good employees um, part of the team. Um, but obviously we're gonna go through the agreements that we made with our collective bargaining agreement. And I believe that we're either going to hire uh, by the end of this month with those bonuses or at that point, we will be able to take some of those savings and contract out with a local business to come in and help us knock it back. Um, I'm really sorry that it looks the way that it does. And I'll tell you, if, if the facilities director and the operations officer were, were here, they would tell you that they absolutely hate the way that it looks. They're, they're personally embarrassed. Um, we do have some volunteer groups that come out. We have asked our athletic teams to to do some, some fundraising through volunteering on our grounds. Um, we're also looking at when we propose new buildings or renovations that include landscape, that we've got landscaping that's both environmentally um, aware and sensitive and do not require as much maintenance as has been the case in some builds that we've recently done in the last five to 10 years. I appreciate the question. Sure. John? Oops, there. A um, couple of questions in the chat. One is, what is the enrollment of North Eugene High School? And the other one is, um, could you talk about the number of incidents of um, hate taking place there as well? I can give you accurate numbers on enrollment. in less than 15 seconds. <laughs> At North Eugene High School, as of today, we have 1,097 students enrolled. Um, this time last year, we had 1,047 students enrolled. 
And we projected our enrollment at North to be 1,058 students and we're 39 students over that. And so that's really encouraging to us. What we see is that the month of October is the high water mark for enrollment in all of our schools. Um, so occasionally we do see schools grow in their enrollment over the course of a year, but generally the people that leave our district leave before school starts and those that come, come before. Um, we anticipate that going up by at least 100 to 150 students the minute we open the door on the new school. Um, open new spaces in Gillum and people feel really good about enrolling their students in, in a school with expanded and up-to-date facilities. Edison, which just opened, um, was much higher in its enrollment than it projections. Camas Ridge, I would imagine, will be the same in North. It's going to be the, the, you know, the newest high school in, I believe, in the county. Um, unless somebody's going to beat us and they haven't told us about it, uh, it's going to be fantastic. So I think you'll see enrollment spike quite a bit. In terms of the number of incidents, um, I, I don't want to give you bad information, but I also don't want to make you think I'm trying to hide info. Uh, I can get you that information if somebody wants to give me an email address that I could send it to. Um, but I want to make sure when I give you information, it's accurate and not my best guess. What I can tell you anecdotally is that over the past couple of years, we've been, I believe, more purposeful in, in implementing programs and ways that people can report things more anonymously that they see are concerning. <clears throat> so we're getting more reports of things that have been happening. But I don't necessarily believe that that represents an actual increase in the things that are happening. I just think that people are more willing to tell us because we're earnest in asking, tell us what's happening, we want to know. I can also say that last year was um, for incidents of racial insensitivity or hate or um, racial harassment was punctuated. Um, our students were out of school, many, many of them for an entire year. Um, lots of students spending a lot of time uh, unsupervised online. Uh, for all of the great things that come with the internet, they're not all great and students can really find themselves going down rabbit holes and there there are active campaigns to convince students of worldviews that we don't support at all. Um, so I, 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 what I can say with absolute confidence is that all of the teachers that I've spoken with and the administrators that I've spoken with said that last year um, incidents of racial harassment seemed more pronounced than they had in prior years. And that's something that we're really concerned about and committed to, to changing. Those types of things have no place in school. They don't Thank you, have Andy. place anywhere, but they don't have a place in school. Sorry to interrupt. No, I you're put, fine, John. I put coach here at riverroadco.org in the chat. You could send that information there. We'll publish it. You bet. Thank you. And there was, uh, uh, Chuck, can we... Um, publish the hate incident data on the 4J website, we absolutely will. We, uh, we want to make sure that nobody believes we have anything to hide. So I'm copying this address and then I'll work with uh, Jenna McCulley, our direct, director of communications, to um, put some information on our website. And I want to let you know that we are going to start a process of um, a website renovation. It's going to be a long process, but some of the feedback that we've gotten is that our website is um, less than helpful, and that's not what we want. So if you get an under construction sign soon, you know that it was planned and we're, we're trying to make our website more accessible and user friendly. Jolene. Hi, thank you so much for sure. all this great information. We're glad you're here. I just wanted to tag on to that and let you know that over the last couple years in the in the Eugene community, a number of neighborhood groups have formed social justice committees and just in reference to issues of racial harassment, racially motivated violence, et cetera, I think those committees would be excellent community partners. Um, you know, neighborhood associations are no longer just interested in land use kinds of issues. And, you know, looking at the River Road group, we have a whole plethora of interests and active neighbors. And um, as the 
chair or the leader currently of the Social Justice Committee, I can speak for the committee and say we would love to partner with the local schools and help. So in addition to just sort of asking for information or data or postings, I just feel like we want to offer our help and support. So just letting you know that. That's fantastic. And you're right. Um, conversations and information exchange is one thing, but actually having you sit at the table and help us problem solve and brainstorm is incredibly valuable. And um, Trinity welch Radovall is the principal at North Eugene High School. Um, and I will ask for her to reach out and start a connection directly from the school. Um, can I send it to the same co-chair at River Road? Um, great, great, thanks a lot. Andy, we have five minutes left. Charles Lee, did I say that? Yeah. Did I pronounce that correctly? You did, that's, that's uh, that? you're one of very few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to also piggyback on what Jolene just talked about. I'm very involved in the River Road Emergency Preparedness uh, team, and we are part of a, a sort of umbrella group of Bethel, Santa Clara, and River Road. And we have talked in passing, it's a small group of volunteers um, with a huge responsibility or charge, and that's to try to figure out ways to be um, safe and to help people in situations of emergencies. And the schools are a natural area of concern. I'm sure you have emergency plans, but there currently isn't a dialogue that we have that I'm aware of um, with the schools here. And I just wanted to offer, you are so welcoming of partnership. And um, it would be nice to be able to talk to somebody in the schools that um, just about what we're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. Um, okay. Did I interrupt you? No. Okay. One of, the, one of the first ideas that come to mind, and that's not the only idea that would emerge, is that schools really need in the event of an evacuation, either because of a natural disaster or a gas leak, or even, you know, gosh, just a, an unexpected flood, parent reunification plans and volunteers to come in who get training that can help calm down really elevated parents and work with students and we so that we can reunify parents with their kids. Um, I can't say that we are very sophisticated yet as a district and plans like parent reunification plans. And there's no sense in, in um, spinning a yarn, making you think we've got it squared away. We've got some work to do there. I will absolutely, um, Charles E, reach out, um, connect this group with Carrie Skinner, who is our safety security and risk director. Um, we are actual, actually in the process of re-upping our emergency operations plans and parent reunification and community engagement is something that we know uh, to bolster. And so look for something coming from us there. That would be great. Thank you so much for this suggestion. Of course. How am I doing on time there, John? Sorry, we have three minutes. All righty. And Claire, whenever you want to take it back when we're done, that's great. Tell you what, if you'll have me back again, I'd come back for sure. Uh, I, I think that a lot will develop over the course of the next two to three months. Um, we'll know more about uh, what's happening with the existing North Eugene building. And, and if it's not these questions, more will emerge. And I'm pretty, I'm really serious about my commitment to community engagement. And um, it's not always easy to hear, but I need to know when we're not hitting the mark. Uh, that way I can help us shift. So again, I really appreciate you inviting me to the meeting this evening. Thank well, you, Andy. Your seriousness is, is well de demonstrated. In the past, we haven't known, had a liaison person with the schools, like with North High School or with different schools. We've been told we'll just contact a principal. Is that still what we should do? That's a great place to start. Okay. Um, but when, when you see yourself talking about something that's region wide, um, maybe at the next meeting, I can plan to give you a breakdown of how we organize administrative support. So you have a better sense of who to talk to. If you're wanting to talk about what's happening at an elementary and middle or elementary, middle high, you don't have to go to each of those principles. Right. Um, that right. might be helpful for you. Thank you. Jan, I see your hand, but we're out of time. 
So Andy, I'll make a copy of the chat and send it to you as well. That would be great. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my email in here for everybody. Um, it's easy to find, but it's easier if I give it to you right here. And you can fire away. I promise to answer your emails within a couple days anyway. I won't promise 24 hours. That's just not going to happen. Well, welcome to the community and thanks for coming and talking with us. We'll see thanks, you again. I appreciate it. Take All care, right. Y'all. Thank you, sir. Over to and you, you're guys. welcome to stay and watch until your uh, your Wi-Fi tells you Fails. to go away. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hang out and listen until I just suddenly disappear, and then you'll know what happened. Okay. Okay. So uh, for those of you that have come late, we did adjust the agenda. We have two items left. The next one is a 10-minute item for Bill Randall and Dan Hill, who own Greenway Townhouses, to... Uh, talk to us about their plans uh, in the future for the access there. Then we'll be followed by Trish Sharma of the city of Eugene to talk to us about a letter of support she's looking for for some improvements along River Road. So Bill, if you are ready, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, actually, thank you. And uh, Dan's, I think, going to be the one leading the uh, discussion tonight, but uh, uh, it's, uh, I went to North Eugene High School, so it's been uh, fun to uh, uh, listen to this tonight. So, Dan, go ahead. Yeah, H hello everybody. Thanks for uh, having us uh, join you tonight. As uh, John said, we're uh, the owners of the Greenway Townhouses at the uh, intersection of uh, Park and River Road. And I know many of you know we've been really struggling. Uh, well, I'll give you a little history first. We uh, built that project 10 years ago. Uh, it was an underutilized lot and we wanted to uh, bring some quality housing to River Road and um, um, which, you know, we love the River Road corridor and just uh, what the environment of uh, River Road has to offer, uh, you know, housing. And uh, so Bill and I are, uh, um, local architects and designers. Um, I own another project uh, up the road that many of you are probably familiar with, the Blossom Cottages uh, up towards um, um, the Beltline. We're, we're uh, looking at some other property on River Road to continue to develop some high quality, energy efficient uh, housing along the corridor. I'm also involved with uh, Square One Villages, uh, working as a consultant for them on the new Peace Village that's gonna be up uh, further in the Santa Clara area. You're probably familiar with that project too. So we're invested in this area. And, and um, as many of you know, we've really struggled the last, I'm gonna say four years, um, maybe five, but four is probably more accurate with just an incredible amount of transient population uh, coming through the, the um, uh, Greenway townhouses there because of the bike path and the connection from River Road to the uh, riverfront path. And, um, you know, the, the problems are all over the city. It's not just exclusive to ours, but just the uh, vandalism, some actually physical assault, uh, car break-ins, um, you know, human feces, other things like that, that have just been, you know, a continual problem for us the last four years and just trying to keep the garbage cleaned up some of those things. So. Bill and I uh, unsuccessfully, as you all know, uh, weren't able to close that uh, access off. And we decided that, uh, you know, we don't want to appeal this again. We want to try to you know, see if we can work with the neighborhood group there on two main items. Um, and, and those two main items, the first one is really more of a safety item. Um, we've had a real problem with uh, people riding bicycles and pedestrians walking through the parking lot rather than, than uh, actually utilizing the bike path. And it's a very dangerous situation. A lot of bikers especially will fly through that parking lot at a pretty high rate of speed. And we've had many, many close calls with uh, people backing up from the apartments and almost hitting uh, bikers. And so it's a dangerous situation, not only for the biker, but also for uh, our, our tenants. And so, 
Um, so what we're hoping to do is ask the, the neighborhood group to try to get the word out to really use the bike path and maybe support us in getting some signage up that really directs people to the bike path instead of the uh, dry riding or walking through the parking lot. Uh, obviously, it's a more direct route to the parking lot, so we understand why people do it, but it's still a really unsafe situation. Uh, the second thing that we're hoping to request from the neighborhood group, and, and again, we want to be good neighbors where we take care of our properties at a high level, and, and uh, a big problem has just been the excessive amount of garbage that ends up in the swale and on the property. And so we're hoping that maybe along with us, the neighborhood group can help police some of that that garbage that ends up in that swell. Um, it's just, uh, um, it's been an ongoing problem for a lot of years and it just adds an extreme amount of continual maintenance to the property. And so, um, so what we're coming to the neighborhood group uh, tonight with is just a couple of requests to assist us in those areas. Uh, we wanna be a good neighbors and we're hoping people will treat and respect our property uh, in the same way. And uh, we know that probably everybody that's here on this Zoom call tonight are not the, the people that we have to worry about, but we certainly have to get the word out to, uh, to the neighbors to um, um, just be um, more mindful that this is private property. It's a public easement, but it's private property. And so we're hoping to partner uh, uh, with your neighborhood and, and we're part of that neighborhood. Uh, and so we just wanna uh, make those requests. And I'd like, to yeah, I just I just want to jump in and add um, really for me, the biggest biggest thing is the safety issue with uh, uh, people flying through the parking lot, either on bikes or we even have heard of motorcycles going through there. And um, uh, I know when we had one of the earlier meetings uh, with some of the neighbors, um, uh, one of the uh, people who live in the neighborhood said that she was guilty of doing that and hadn't realized it. And so I think, you know, the communication and somehow getting that word out uh, would be most helpful uh, just to make sure that people use for walking and biking uh, the, the path that goes around the, the south side and not the parking lot. Thank you, guys. Um, um, if you are asking us to help police the garbage in the swale, are you providing a place for us to put that garbage? You know, John, uh, because we can't lock the, the dumpster enclosure right there at the end of the path, um, as, we, as we mentioned in our testimony with the city, uh, there, there's just no way to physically really lock those containers up because the transient population ends up breaking the gates or, uh, you know, just creating actually more uh, vandalism to those areas. And so, those are open all the time. So all people have to do is pick up the garbage, open up the gate and put it right into the, into the uh, containers that are right there. So uh, it's pretty easy, uh, pretty easy access, so. Okay, thank you. We've got three and a half minutes and I see Bobby Joe's hand up. Would you like to ask a question, sir? You're muted. Not sir, please. I apologize. Yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, um, I do want to make an observation as a bicyclist. I have ridden through that bike path just to assert the right of way. But uh, I come on to River Road just north of that uh, from Sunnyside. I passed Stoltz, which- Stefan, we came. have a short period of time. Could you get to your point? And then you know, 100 yards later, there's a path through Razor oh. Park. So I actually am at a loss as to why we need that particular access. Um, that's already been decided. Thank you, Bobby Joe. Stefan, uh, Jolene first. I know we have just a minute. Um, so I have a suggestion that there be a garbage can installed near the bus stop at that intersection. I am one of the many neighbors who walks 
along River Road or walks over to Razor Park and picks up garbage just along the way if I think to bring an extra garbage sack with me. And there's um, trash sometimes from the fast food places or convenience stores in the neighborhood. And um, it just seems like having a garbage can near that location, a public you know, facility, or near the entryway to Razor Park might help reduce some of the litter along that way. And, um, and then I'm not quite sure about the question regarding signage, but I would support you in working with the city on putting up appropriate signage that really helps indicate what's public and what's private and where things go, you know, where that access point goes to. Thank you, Jolene. Stefan, make it quick, please. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'll do my best. Um, I'm a little resentful of folks trying to be good neighbors now after they tried to shut down access. And I think it's their private property and it's their responsibility to put up whatever signage they want. I don't think we should uh, share in any cost involved in that. I have no problem with publicizing in our newsletter that people should use the path rather than the, the parking uh, area. Um, but, you know, you built private property along a place where you knew there was an easement, and it's your responsibility, it's not ours. Thank you, Stephen. Very quickly, Julie, could well, you make it quick? Yes, I can. Uh, first of all, thank you for agreeing to not appeal the decision. Um, and very welcoming to your projects. You do a beautiful job in the neighborhood. I agree that some signage is going to be a great deal of the process involved here in order to reach the successful goals. I feel like it's a little bit of a mixed message saying it's private property, but we can go on to your private property to dispose of garbage. I think that that might create some misconceptions there about what's allowable and what's not. So I think that signage and um, getting the word out simultaneously, as well as all of us that do use that public easement, uh, using it as a role model, that if we're doing the right thing, more people will continue to do so. So thank you again. Thank you, Dan and Bill for coming. Um, I'm afraid we're out of time. We'll talk some more. Thanks. Great. Thank you, John. Okay, one item left on the, well, two, if we can squeeze them both in. Um, the next item will be Logan Tellis telling us about this request for a letter of support for some projects along River Road. So Logan, are you ready to go? Yep, I'll try to keep this um, relatively brief since we're a bit short on time. Um, but hi everyone, my name is Logan Tellis. I'm a transportation planner with the city of Eugene. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, asking for a letter of support for a grant application we'd like to put in um, that would potentially support some safety improvements on River Road. Uh, so there's a new exciting federal funding source called the Safe Streets and Roads for All grant. Um, this is the first year the grants uh, up for uh, cities to apply for, and it's gonna be a new um, $1 billion in annual funding um, from the federal government uh, from 2022 through 2026. Um, so we have the ability to apply for implementation funding for our Vision Zero Action Plan. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, our Vision Zero Action Plan looked at nine years of crash data fairly in depth and um, found River Road to be one of the most challenging locations in town. Um, it's our second highest crash street for people biking, our fifth highest crash street for people walking, and our fifth highest crash street for people driving. Um, that's, you know, at least in terms of uh, life-changing injury crashes and fatalities. Um, so we certainly want to fund some safety improvements along the corridor. Um, this grant opportunity presents uh, uh, an exciting possibility for us to get some improvements out there. Uh, what we would like to include in the scope of our application um, is uh, protected bike lanes. Um, that's sort of the, the primary piece. Um, we are thinking for the purposes of the cost estimate and planning out our application, uh, a six foot wide bike lane uh, with a two foot wide buffer and some concrete protected separators to make that bike space feel a little bit more comfortable for people. Um, we're also um, including green uh, like 
pavement colorant at conflict points to help highlight, visually highlight um, where cyclists are gonna be crossing um, uh, motor vehicle traffic potentially. <laughs> Uh, in addition to the protected bike facility, we're hoping to get some uh, pedestrian hybrid beacons funded. Um, for anyone who doesn't know pedestrian hybrid beacons, um, I'm sure many of you are aware of those lower to the ground RRFB crossings that we have on River Road. Pedestrian hybrid beacon beacons are taller. Um, they're like the height of a, of a traffic signal. Um, they're a bit different. A pedestrian would hit the button and it would be able to produce um, something more like a red phase. Uh, we have a few of them on Franklin for anyone who is trying to visualize what exactly I'm talking about. Um, we think adding that additional height uh, opposed to the lower level RFBs that we have out there now um, is something that's gonna help drivers see from further away uh, that pedestrians are entering into uh, a crosswalk. Um, and also we've heard from some folks that, uh, who, who currently use our RRFBs on River Road that they don't always produce the, the yielding effect that uh, we would ideally like to see. So something taller, um, like, a, like a pedestrian hybrid beacon, um, may be a, a bit more effective, effective at producing that yield compliance. Um, those pedestrian hybrid beacon crossings would come with uh, a center pedestrian refuge island, so there's a more comfortable protected space in the center for people to pause if they need to. Um, and additionally, uh, we'd like to fund uh, lighting improvements along with these uh, bicycle and pedestrian facility improvements. So in filling street lighting gaps where there are street lighting gaps, um, and also, we'd like to be able to upgrade existing streetlights to LEDs um, for a number of reasons. One, they're more energy efficient, and two, it's just a bit easier to control where the light's being directed with an LED opposed to um, some of the older streetlight technology that we have out there now. So, you, you know, you're targeting, the, you're targeting the light a bit better and you're losing less to light pollution out above and, and away from what the area you're trying to illuminate. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, with that, I'll take a pause um, for any questions. I know I blew through a lot there really quick, but I know we're trying to um, save time for another agenda item, and, and I'm sure you all need time to discuss whether you'd like to put forth the letter of support. Um, I see I see a couple of hands raised. Uh, John, am I good to call, just call on people? Yeah, I, thank you, and I would encourage everyone to be brief because we do need to take the vote as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, Daniel, go ahead. Thanks, Logan. I uh, appreciate that, and I sent you a a, a DM as well, um, if, you, if you see that. Um, there's been some technology, I, I sent uh, Rob an email on this um, over in Europe that was actually pretty, um, uh, I thought pretty amazing. It's a simple switch that hooks in with the LED so that when you press the button um, to, to do the crosswalk, the entire um, street lights above it increase their um, brightness by 25%. So the entire, um, entrance way becomes very bright. So uh, it adds a, a little bit of factor. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at that. But the question I have is, do you know have an update on the crossing at Hatton um, and what we're, where we're at in that process? Yeah, I emailed the engineering project manager about that yesterday, and I've not heard back from him on the new estimate for when construction can start. Um, we are experiencing staff shortages as a lot of organizations. I've heard we have 10 vacancies on our third floor, which is mostly engineers. Um, so that is resulting in some stuff being pushed back a bit. I, I don't have an answer for you right now, but I, uh, but I did email him and I'm hoping to hear back soon about the new, uh, estimate for when we can get to that. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, Jolene, I think you were next. Hi, thank you. Um, two things. One is, can we get the speed limit on River Road lowered to 30 miles per hour, which would also place all these safety improvements in line with Vision Zero data regarding severity of injury? So I know you can't even probably answer that now, but I feel like that's essential to all these other improvements. And mm -hmm. the other is, mm -hmm. can you partner with the county so that some of our other streets that are county governed also can see some improvements in terms of things like complete street design, green green painting to allow for safer pedestrian and cyclist connectors. 
to River Road. That's all. Thanks. Sure. To, to briefly answer your first question about the speed limit, um, the state of Oregon regulates the process by which speed limits can be set. Um, the, there have been some very recent rule changes that have gone into effect. So we're kind of doing a bit of internal evaluation on what that means for us and what that means for what types of speed limit reductions we might pursue in the future. Um, I don't have a, a, an immediate answer for River Road, but that is something that I can talk to our traffic engineer about and we can figure out whether that's something we feel we would be successful in. Um, and then for your second question about the county, um, you know, this new funding opportunity is also something that would be available to them. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that they will put in an application. I, I don't immediately know whether they can, uh, or, or excuse me, whether they will. Um, but yeah, that, that's certainly something I can, I can talk with them about and see if maybe there's potential for us to coordinate in the future. Because um, as I mentioned, this grant is going to, you know, continue over subsequent years, and it's going to be a really important funding opportunity for both uh, this project here, uh, potentially, and future projects that we want to go for. Thank uh, you. You've yeah. got one more person, Brent. Please make it very short. I will. Thank you. Uh, Logan, thanks for coming. Uh, so I like the idea of the crosswalks, and I think we would all appreciate as, as many crosswalks as possible on River Road to help slow down the traffic. And the bike lanes are a very interesting idea. My question is, how will these bike lanes uh, meld or mesh with the potential for the move ahead project? So if the bike lanes are already going to be built for the portion of the move ahead project from Maxwell to Chamber, I'm sorry, Maxwell to Park, how is it, is that a double funding project? Um, it just, I just a question I had. Sure, yeah, to, to try answering your question briefly, um, at this stage in the process, we don't have to resolve the detailed design questions about how the protected bike facility would interact with transit. At this point, we're just trying to secure the funding. And one, if we received the grant award, we would need to use it within five years. Um, so we would have time to coordinate with LTD and make sure we're coming up with, with a good design solution um, for how we're managing uh, any potential bike and bus conflicts. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Logan, thank you very much. Maybe we should go to the actual voting. A reminder to everybody, and we're gonna put you on your own recognizance. If you have attended a meeting within the past year and signed in, you're eligible to vote. Um, who is talking? Anyway, um, so what I'm going to ask you to do, again, if you're a bona fide um, voting member, please go to reactions. And if you support the idea of the letter, please enter a green dot. If you don't, please enter a red dot. So let's do that now, please. Can you repeat that, please, John? Yes, go to reactions. There's a red check mark or a red X mark. If you support the letter, click on the green, the green yes mark. And if Do we have a motion or are we just voting? Okay, I, good vote. point, Stefan. I move that we send a letter of support for the projects um, mentioned earlier by Logan. Is there a second just to make this legal? Claire, are you seconding? I'll second. Julian seconds. Okay. okay. So please continue to vote. Thank you, Stefan. I apologize. And Claire, we're getting we're getting some uh, static on your end. Thank you. Okay. If you, um, I'll give you another thirty seconds or so, and then we will record the vote. Okay, thank you. The vote has stabilized. It is 19 for and two against. So we will send the letter of support to the city for this proposed project. Thank you, everybody. Um, Claire, I'll turn it back over to you. Very and nice. Thanks for, thanks for thank coming, you. Logan. Yes. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to turn it over to Brenda to wrap up the meeting. 
Great. Can you uh, unspot? Oh, I may, you may, I may have you on speaker. Can everybody? Yeah, on gallery is a better way to do this. Um, I do not think I'm going to be able to call everybody by name and say, Chelsea, what are you taking away from you tonight with this meeting? So I'm just going to invite you to write in the chat again, and I'll read a few of them. I'm leaving today's meeting of the River Road Community Organization with an answer to that question. Joy or hate or confusion or excitement or whatever you're thinking, what are you taking away from tonight's meeting? Just throw that in the chat. It's a little evaluation. It's a little temperature check. Hopefulness, excitement, and new knowledge. A little more hope. Thanks for showing up. Always good to participate in local democracy. To get more information on the projects before voting on them next time. A little more information would be helpful. Impressed and inspired. Thank you, those of you that are fast typers. Appreciate the openness of the new school superintendent. Leaving with River Road with more knowledge about the community's issues. And, and since this is the very end of the meeting, right? Claire, we're done. I invite people to just unmute a little bit and say hello or goodbye with your very own voice. I know nobody will hear you all. Everybody will be talking over each other, but just do it. Adios. Sweet <laughs> dreams. Nice to nice chat to with you all. Nice to Bye see everyone. you all. Thank you. See you all. Bye. Bye.